Today, we are going to talk about the continents and oceans of the world. You will learn some interesting facts about both the land and the water that cover our planet. Do you know the least inhabited continent? And do you know how many people live on the most populated one? The answers to these questions and more are coming right up. So let's start our journey to see these wonderful and gigantic parts of the world. To start, we'll begin with the more familiar territory for us humans, the land. First, we have Africa. It is often said that Africa is the cradle of humanity because human evolution took place on this continent. The first human beings emerged here after a long evolution that lasted millions of years. In fact, the oldest human-related fossils belonging to species such as Australopithecus, Homo habilis, or Homo erectus were all found in Africa. And the oldest remains of Homo sapiens, our species, were also found there. It is home to about 1.5 billion people and is bordered by the Mediterranean Sea, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, and the Red Sea. By the way, even if it's called the Red Sea, that sea isn't red. I mean, look at it, it's blue, just like all the other seas. Why are they calling it the Red Sea? Why are they lying to us? By the way, do you know why it's called the Red Sea? If you know the story, please tell us in the comments below. I'll check and see if you know the right answer, and I'll reply to you. The next continent we are going to see is Asia. Although it's difficult to see, Africa and Asia are connected by a narrow strip of land in the Sinai Peninsula area. However, it's narrow enough that we can consider the two different continents, if not different land masses. Asia is the largest continent on Earth, and as you might expect due to its size, it is also the most populous. In fact, around 4.8 billion people live in Asia. Now, you're probably thinking that since it's so big and has the most people by far, they're probably spread out all over the continent. However, that's not really the case because much of Asia is covered in inhospitable land, such as the tundras and taigas of Siberia, the vast Gobi Desert, and the Himalayan mountains. In fact, most of the people live in very concentrated areas where living conditions are best. Take a look at this. If we draw a circle, here, this circle surrounds half of the people on Earth. This circle, half the people. The other half lives everywhere else on the planet outside of that circle. Crazy, right? So, even though Asia is massive, much of it is empty. Asia is also home to the tallest mountain on Earth, Mount Everest, a gigantic mountain rising up to 8,829 meters, found in the Himalayan mountains I mentioned before. I guess it's no wonder nobody lives there. It was in Asia where human beings first discovered animal husbandry and agriculture in an area known as the Fertile Crescent. From there, this innovation spread to other places around the globe, while in some other regions, people also independently learned to cultivate plants for food. All in all, Asia is bordered by the Arctic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, the Black Sea, the Caucasus Mountains, and the Ural Mountains.
Oceania is a continent that encompasses a vast amount of sea and a tiny amount of land. Its largest islands are Australia, New Guinea, and New Zealand, while the rest of the islands, scattered across the Pacific Ocean, are mostly tiny in size. This is the least populated continent in the world, with just over 40 million people living here, less than the population of even a middle-sized country like Spain, for example. Unfortunately, due to climate change, many of these small islands, which are very flat and barely rise at all above the ocean, will disappear as sea levels rise and submerge them. And when some of these islands disappear, they'll find themselves living with a new neighbor. Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? The next continent is the continent of likes. Haha! <laughs> See what I did there? Continent of likes? If you're enjoying the video, give it a nice big like. So that this continent doesn't disappear under the waters either. Hitting the like button, subscribing, and clicking on the notification bell will help this channel grow even larger than Mount Everest. So if you do, thank you very much. Next up is Europe. It is a very small continent, but it is home to about 750 million people, leading to a very high population density. However, despite its small size, it is a continent of immense historical significance, as it is home to some of the most influential cultures in history, such as ancient Greece, ancient Rome, or the British, Spanish, and French empires. Europe is bordered by the Arctic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, the Black Sea, the Caucasus Mountains, and the Ural Mountains. Crossing the Atlantic Ocean, we find America, which is the longest continent in the world, stretching from the Arctic Circle to the Antarctic Circle. Nearly one billion people live here. America was the last continent reached by human beings just about 20,000 years ago during the last ice age. Since so much of the ocean water was stored on the ice on the land, the ocean levels were significantly lower than they are today, allowing a land bridge to be formed between Asia and the northern part of America in modern day Alaska. Since then, much of the ice has melted and the resulting sea level rise isolated America from Asia. The continent, as a result, remained disconnected from the rest of the world until Christopher Columbus's ships arrived in 1492. Since then, America has been connected with the rest of the world, and today the world's leading economic power is the United States, an American country. Some continental models divide America into two distinct continents, North America and South America. Some people believe it's an artificial division, as America is a single landmass and its countries share an intense common history. However, the same could be said of Africa and Asia, which are connected by the narrow landmass of the Sinai Peninsula we mentioned earlier. So, by using that standard, some argue that the Panama Isthmus connecting the two larger landmasses is narrow enough that they should be considered two different continents, like Africa and Asia. However, in the modern world, both Africa and the Americas are now separated by man-made canals of water that allow ships to cross from one body of water to another. So does that make them officially separate continents? Depends on who you ask, I guess, so I'll let you decide. Regardless, America is bounded by the Arctic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Antarctic Ocean, and the Atlantic Ocean. We now come to the final continent, Antarctica, a frozen wasteland located directly on the South Pole. In most maps, it appears highly distorted due to its southern position, so it's best to observe it by focusing directly on it as though you were floating in space above the South Pole. 
Earlier, I mentioned that Oceania was the least populated continent in the world, but the reality is that Antarctica's situation is far worse. Due to being an enormous icy wasteland year-round, no human cultures have ever developed in Antarctica since long-term survival was even possible. In fact, even today, during summer when the sun doesn't set in Antarctica, at most around 5,000 scientists reside there, and that's it. And then, when winter arrives and Antarctica becomes a frigid, dark place, its population decreases to only about 140 people that must be fed with rations shipped from outside the continent. Antarctica is entirely surrounded by the Antarctic Ocean. Now that we know the continents, let's identify the main oceans, which we've mentioned a little bit already. First, the Pacific Ocean is the largest ocean in the world and is situated between Asia, the Americas, and Oceania. Historically, it has been one of the most challenging oceans to navigate due to its immense size and the scarcity of islands, making it easy to get lost and perish in the open sea. Surprisingly, Polynesians sailing in simple catamarans managed to colonize and inhabit many islands in the Pacific Ocean. The Atlantic Ocean is located between America, Europe, and Africa and is the second largest ocean in the world. For thousands of years, it was an ocean that no one dared to cross. But eventually, the Vikings did around 1000 AD, and later Spanish navigators in 1492 AD succeeded in connecting America with the rest of the continents. The third position is held by the Indian Ocean, located between Africa, Asia, and Oceania. This ocean has always been traversed by humans. Trade along its coasts has been intense, reaching from the shores of Africa to the Malay Archipelago. And finally, in the north, around the North Pole, we find the Arctic Ocean, while in the south, around Antarctica, in the South Pole, there is the Antarctic Ocean. These two oceans, stormy and very dangerous, were not regularly navigated until the 19th century. Even today, they are the least traversed oceans in the world, as they are treacherous waters with very few people living along their shores. But you should not think that oceans are of little importance. Although humans live on land, most of global trade is conducted by sea, crossing the oceans aboard enormous container ships. In fact, on this map, you can see the main maritime trade routes. It highlights the ridiculous amounts of ocean traffic between North America and Europe, or between Asia and North America. There is also traffic crossing from Asia through the Indian Ocean to Europe, or from South America to Europe. And, as you can see, the least traveled ocean in the world is the Antarctic Ocean. Oh, the Antarctic Ocean must be so sad. With this, we conclude this comprehensive overview of the continents and oceans of our planet. Please, if you enjoyed it, click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Doing this is crucial for the channel to thrive. If you want to learn more, I recommend watching some of the following videos. So, thank you very much for watching until the end, and I'll see you next time.